Um, US Air Force pilots are not allowed to take mefloquine? Yep. There's, um, well, there's, there's an issue about pilots and, and mefloquine. It goes back to this, what we said as a neuropsychiatric side effects. There's a small percentage of people whose concentration and whatever can be affected by mefloquine. So most air forces around the world and most, uh, uh, you know, whether they be civilian air uh, pilots or military pilots are banned from taking mefloquine. There are, that is somewhat controversial because there are some who say that, uh, you know, a pilot who's getting malaria is probably not the right person to be flying a plane either, but uh, for reasons of safety and to be absolutely sure, uh, it's one of a group of people who are not prescribed mefloquine as people who are pilots. So that's because of the concentration that's yeah, required? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's because if they are one of the rare groups of people who have side effects of the medication, you know, in terms of concentration, there's a small group of people who that might happen to. You don't want the pilot being the person who has that side effect, whereas if someone else is in another job and they get, you know, they're, uh, you know, they've got a desk job or do something else and, and they discover they're getting a side effect to it, it's not going to cause the plane to crash, which is what we worry about with, you know, pilots. Could you argue that um, it's equally dangerous for soldiers who carry guns? You could argue that it is dangerous. It's always a cost-benefit. Like everything in life, I think there's a cost and a benefit, and it's the job of the doctors and the people who make the policy to weigh up what the cost and benefit of these things. I personally don't think that if a pilot was known to be tolerant of mefloquine, say, for example, he had it before and he was on it regularly and it didn't cause him any problems, I personally would say that there would be no problem with him being flying a plane at all. The problem becomes... You know, it's in this legalistic world and all the rest of it, and you know, people want to be up absolutely certain. So my argument would be, let's find out if they get these side effects by trying it, and if they don't get the side effects, well, then it's perfectly safe. Um, uh, do you know if the military trials the drug before? They usually sending... usually before troops are always start on their animal or before they're deployed, and that's a really important thing to do because if they can't tolerate it. The last thing I would do is find out when they're in the environment where the mosquitoes are. Yeah. So they will always try the drug out first. And but that didn't happen in the case of East, East Timor. Um, I'm not aware of the circumstances that took place there. Um, there sometimes, the, obviously, people need to be moved quickly, and sometimes there may be. There was a trial I know that they took, and everybody was able was required to give in consent, informed consent to what was going on, and you would always do that before you uh, began the medication and it would be logical to do that before you go to an area where you're going to be taking the medication. Yeah. So do you believe it would be safe to trial drugs in war zones? Uh, well, I think it's often necessary to do that because that may be the only opportunity you have to find out whether whether there, it works or not when, when you've got people in an area where uh, you know, that's w where the drug's going to be used. You know, it's like all these other drugs, you want to be able to trial them in people who are going to get the problem that you're trying to prevent or treat the disease that you... You don't trial cancer drugs in patients without cancer or AIDS drugs in people who, who haven't got HIV. So, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, sometimes we have to do trials under circumstances that are not ideal in order to be able to find out whether they're the right drug to use or not. Okay. And are there any other benefits to mefloquine? Um, I thought have to take it once. Once a week, and it, it's a very good animal error in that there's almost no drug resistance reported to it. There's a very small risk in one part of Indochina of getting mefloquine resistant malaria, but that's now much less of a problem since they've uh, changed their drug policies in uh, around Cambodia and Vietnam and places like that. So, uh, compared to a lot of other animal errors, the drug resistance problem is much less. Okay, and do doctors usually prescribe doxy or mefloquine? Like there's a, if you ask 10 different health uh, infectious diseases or travel medicine specialists, you'll get 10 different opinions. Some doctors like myself think that it's a good drug to use as long as it's appropriately used and you screen your patients well. Other doctors, particularly doctors who've seen patients with side effects, may be much less willing to use it. Um, and then the question is whether your patient's going to take the drug or not too. Okay. And what sort of screening processes are you talking about? Uh, well, making sure the person hasn't got a condition that would mean that you wouldn't give it. So if someone had epilepsy, if someone who had passive depression, they're the two major uh, contraindications to taking mefloquine. That, that so mental health problems? Yeah, mental health problems, and psychiatric problems and, and seizure disorders are the three things that um, you would absolutely not not want to use mefloquine in those people. Okay, and where do you think malaria prevention is going to go in the future? 
well, there's a lot of work going on in making, you know, providing new drugs, making drugs safer. There is work going along in trying to understand why some people get side effects from methylquine and others don't. It may be that there's particular genetic predispositions to it, so maybe we'd be able to one day work out before we start treatment whether a certain person is likely to get those side effects and another person isn't. Because that would be a really useful thing to do. So there's work going on in that field as well, as well as with new antimalarial drugs which don't have the same side effects. Um, the World Health Organization recommends taking a combination of drugs for some... For treatment, yes. Yep. For treatment, that's true. It's what's called artemisinin and combination therapy, and that's what I was referring to in places like Cambodia, Vietnam, wherever, where commonly an artemisinin is combined with methylquine, and that's actually a really good treatment for malaria, because the artemisinin kills most of the parasites quickly, and then the methylquine kills the small remaining number of parasites, and hangs around in the body to make sure that it doesn't come back. So that's a very good combination, combining an artemisinin drug with mefloquine. Okay. And what steps do you think the Defence might, defense Force might take in the future to prevent malaria? Are there? Well, the Defence Force certainly aren't standing still. There are ongoing trials happening in, in, in malaria prevention. Um, and I know they're working with other overseas organisations as well. Um, there are obviously there are some promising drugs in the pipeline that they are trying out at the moment. Um, it may be difficult for them to comment on that at the moment because until the trials are finished they're not going to be able to discuss what they've been doing. But yeah. I do know that there are a number of promising new animal aerial drugs available. Um, I think that there's a big education issue that needs to be done with troops and with the Australian public about the risks and benefits of all health issues and malaria is one of them. And uh, um, sometimes I think the wrong message gets conveyed about, about the risks of drugs versus the risk of dying of malaria, which is certainly a real possibility in some of the areas where the Australian Army and other Defence Forces are, are deployed. Okay. Um, do you know what drugs they're trialling? Well, there is one new drug called Tefenequin, which is uh, um, a drug that could potentially be given only once a month for, tri for yeah. uh, prevention of malaria, and that would be fantastic if you uh, just give someone one, <laughs> one, one tablet once a month or one dose once a month and then not have to worry about it. Um, so that, that's one drug that is that, that there is quite a bit of work going on at the moment. Okay, I heard that they trialled that in East Timor too, but yeah, it left that, calcium deposits in people's eyes. Is no, there is concern about corneal deposits with tefenequin, and that slowed down its uh, marketing. It's uh, the company that uh, owns the drug is has been very cautious in its marketing, and there have been some issues about uh, deposits in the eyes. Um, I don't know where that's at at the moment, but uh, again. Nothing's without side effects in this life. We need to make sure that the drug is safe before it gets marketed, and it's not marketed anywhere in the world at the moment. But a drug such as that, which is such a great side effect profile, would be really good. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay.